Welcome everybody. My name is Luca Villa. I'm a solution architect for that. And, uh, and I am Giuseppe Bonocorema, solution architect too. So uh, thank you for coming um, to this presentation about uh, Istio real world scenarios. Um, through this presentation, we will walk through these uh, uh, topics. So we will uh, uh, discuss about, we will do a, a brief introduction about the technology itself uh, and its features. And then uh, I will uh, 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 hand over to Giuseppe who will discuss the uh, interesting part of the presentation, so the, the real world use cases. Um, Istio, um, well, this comes from uh, the need to, to face uh, complex uh, challenges when you have to uh, move your workload to, uh, to cloud uh, uh, to cloud infrastructure where uh, the developers that need to uh, uh, adopt uh, a microservice uh, approach uh, and uh, the operator need to face uh, multi-cloud and, uh, uh, and the hybrid uh, infrastructure that grows and become very complex to manage. Uh, this is where Istio comes into place. Uh, it provides uh, a service mesh that can be layered to existing uh, uh, applic distributed application uh, architectures uh, and uh, at the same time uh, it's a platform that, pr that provides uh, uh, API and uh, the ability to interact with uh, existing uh, uh, log backend, logging backends uh, or uh, auditing backends uh, and so it, is, it eases the, uh, the job for the operators. Um, Istio, um, so when, when you have uh, an architecture of microservices, uh, you just need to uh, deal with the, the way all the microservices inter uh, uh, communicate to each other. Uh, Istio offers uh, uh, the ability to, uh, to deal with the uh, routing of, the, of these components uh, to, uh, to secure the connection, the communication between the components, and uh, uh, to observe what's happening uh, in, uh, in all the, the, the parts of your, of your mesh. And uh, uh, this is done uh, with, uh, uh, by leveraging uh, some uh, external tools like Prometheus for uh, monitoring, uh, which is use, useful for monitoring and uh, alerting uh, Grafena to um, do uh, time series uh, analytics, and also Kiali, which is a, a web user interface that uh, provides the ability to uh, have a graphical uh, vision about your uh, network mesh. Uh, and finally, Jaeger, uh, which is uh, for um, distributed uh, uh, tracing. So, uh, one of the strong points of uh, Istio is that it uh, separates the, the data plane from the control plane. So uh, it allows to uh, manage uh, the interconnection between uh, your different, different services uh, by uh, using uh, some intelligent proxies, which are based on Envoy. So uh, these proxies are coupled with uh, uh, each, uh, sim each, uh, each, uh, each service and uh, um, they are able to, uh, to manage uh, the, uh, the routing between services and uh, to secure them uh, through TLS. And uh, this all happens uh, by injecting these proxies into the pod, so without touching the service itself but uh, uh, coupling the service with the, uh, with the proxy itself, which is called the sidecar for this reason. Uh, at the same time, we have the control plane where uh, all the configuration stuff happens. So the, the proxies are configured through the control plane uh, and uh, um, the, the, all the policies are enforced uh, uh, all the certificates are distributed uh, and managed, uh, and so on. So, uh, 
Traffic management uh, uh, happens by, um, uh, well, if you have uh, a, an infrastructure that scale, you don't want to manage this, uh, dy uh, this uh, dynamic uh, within your application because this uh, makes things very complex. So uh, the coupling, the, the infrastructure scaling from uh, your data flow uh, uh, is a lot the, the um, configuration and the managing of your, of your mesh. So um, in this case, uh, we have uh, the pilot, which uh, provides the, all the configuration uh, uh, and the information uh, for the uh, uh, routing uh, and the traffic rules to the to the proxies, and uh, in, uh, you can uh, uh, set very uh, dy uh, dynamic routing uh, rules. So you can do A/B testing, uh, or uh, you can do uh, canary deployments, uh, uh, or uh, gradual rollouts, uh, or you can even. Uh, uh, do uh, failure, failure recovery by setting timeouts or uh, uh, setting some uh, uh, circuit breakers. And finally, you can even uh, inject faults to test uh, the resiliency of your infrastructure to, uh, to faults and to, uh, to, set, to test the compliance to the recovery policies. Uh, Istio uh, assumes that uh, all the traffic that comes into the mesh uh, are passing through a proxy, an envoy proxy. Uh, this allows to, uh, to set these uh, dynamic routing policies, so A-B testing or, uh, or canary deployments, also for the user-facing services. Um, at the same time, you can set an, an egress gateway so a proxy for the outgoing traffic, which is not mandatory, but it's uh, strongly suggested because in that case you can uh, deal with failures even uh, to the traffic that is flowing to external services. And uh, you can also uh, do fault injection and test the behavior in that case. Um, the pilot is responsible for uh, keeping the, fr the fresh list of the services that are registered with the platform uh, and uh, to make this transparent to the, uh, the application itself uh, and also to the, uh, to the invoice proxies. Uh, so it's a pluggable uh, 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 architecture and uh, uh, for instance, here we see that it interfaces with Kubernetes and uh, it provides uh, the, uh, service of, the service discovery to, to the proxies so that the proxies uh, can have also uh, always a, a fresh pool for doing load balancing, for instance. ISTI also provides a, 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 an interesting set of uh, security features. Uh, it provides uh, uh, strong identity and uh, uh, transparent uh, uh, encryption between all the services. Uh, provide uh, also um, the, the policy enforcement so, and uh, authentication and uh, auditing. Uh, all these components, all these uh, features are provided through uh, the components that you see in the content plane. So uh, you have uh, Citadel, for instance, which is responsible to deal, to manage all the uh, certificates and keys generation and refreshing. Uh, the pilot that is responsible to provide uh, uh, strong uh, uh, naming uh, for the services and uh, and uh, access policies and authentication policy, authentication service, and uh, the mixer, which is uh, responsible for uh, uh, authorization and for auditing. 
And uh, so the, the goal of Istio is to provide uh, a secure by default uh, uh, mesh uh, where the, all the, the burden of uh, uh, keeping the infrastructure secure is uh, uh, put, uh, taken away from, from the application itself and to some extent also from the operators. As we said, the, the mixer is uh, responsible for auditing uh, and uh, all the authorization part. So uh, it interfaces with a, a set of uh, uh, pluggable backends, uh, like logging backends, quota backends, uh, and so on. And uh, so uh, it, uh, even in this case, it, uh, the, the focus is on giving more control to operations but the same, at the same time keeping safe the, the application part from all this. Uh, as we has, uh, have seen at the beginning, uh, all this is complemented with uh, a, a series of tools. One is Kiali, which is the um, user interface for, uh, uh, for uh, uh, Istio, and uh, it provides uh, some visibility, graphical visibility of uh, the uh, the topology of the network and uh, from different point of view. And you can also uh, look into the configuration objects of Istio. These are just a couple of uh, screenshots. So here you see the namespace graph uh, and uh, where you have already at the first glance a, a, a set of uh, informations like, like the uh, status of uh, all the routes and the objects and uh, the statistic about the errors. And this is a versioned application graph where you can uh, see different version of the reviews uh, uh, service uh, and uh, how they are interconnected. The last one is uh, Jaeger, which is for uh, distributed tracing. This gives uh, the ability to uh, to do um, uh, very um, detailed tracing about uh, the, the, the mesh and the application. And uh, uh, so you can see here, there is an example. You can search by service or, or uh, something else, and you can see all the traces that are, that are archived. And uh, every trace is compound uh, of different spans and you can uh, uh, dig into uh, every single trace and uh, you can see uh, where uh, most of, in this case, most of the time uh, was spent during uh, the, uh, the operation. Sorry. Okay. Thank you, Luca. So, how Luca told you very clearly, this is the interesting part of the presentation, so now I feel some pressure about this. And I've also got a spoiler about my slides, so this is not so good. So joking apart, uh, as I was saying, I'm a solution architect, which means that my day-by-day -day job is going into customers and trying to explain this kind of stuff in a, um, a comprehensible way, for also for non-techy stuff. And the whole idea behind this presentation is that uh, all we said with Luca, so all the infrastructure about Istio and sidecars and proxy and whatever, this is something very interesting for techie audience. But uh, what, it, what we feel is that the customer is very interested in this project and we need to link back this from features to what the customer really needs and what the customer really wants to do. So uh, it's not all about the technology, so the sidecar, the proxy, and all the kind of stuff, but it's what they can do with this. And so the idea is uh, you find a lot of uh, information on the, net, on the, on the internet about uh, how Istio is done internally, but uh, let's try to have a look at the use cases, what the customer can really do. And this is the reason why a lot of customers are really interested and reach out to us as a solution architect, as Red Hat, uh, to, to, to understand when Istio will go GA because they feel that this can solve in an elegant way that the real uh, use case. But let's have a look at this scenario. So, uh, oh, I will, Luca was telling us, one of the most important things in Istio is that you can inject policies and you can drive your traffic in an advanced way, so you can do advanced routing. As you can, say, as you can see in these slides, we are trying to, to put this kind of 
template in which we have a, um, a, a graphical way of seeing the, 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 the flow of the traffic, then we have uh, some words about the use case and how often, how common it is, how often you can see this at customers. So this is somewhat a bit common. And what does it mean, advanced routing? It means that you can uh, request by request, of course, uh, uh, giving some kind of uh, configuration, we will see how, you can route some specific kind of traffic to different versions of the software. And this is something very important because, as you can imagine, this can drive a lot of uh, very different uh, uh, advanced deployment scenario. Uh, let's have a look how you can do this in, in, in Istio. This is, of course, a subset of the rule you have to inject. It's not something copy-pastable, but it's just to give you a, a glance. So uh, one, one of the ways to do this is to inject a rule. In, what, in, in, in this rule, you just inspect the, the, the request coming. And as by in this example, uh, you can match an header, an, an HTTP header. So the, the idea is that you can find an header called, by example, IP location, because <coughs> Some, something else in, in your chain is doing a, a geolocation and is injecting this, this header. And you can route all the uh, request having this header to a specific version, in this case, version which was, as you can see, uh, we are imagining two different versions of a website, as an example, and you have everybody going to a version and uh, users, are, users coming from the Brno area coming to a different version. So what is inside this? Why this is interesting? Because can enable a lot of different advanced releases. Uh, first of all is, as in our example of before, is a geographic adoption of the stuff. Many of my customers are banks and they want, when they release a new stuff, open up just for, for the offices in Italy, open up just for the office in Czech, just to understand how it's going on, or maybe because in that version there are some feature related to a specific uh, law or something that has to be enabled just in one geography. You can do this without touching, without using basically feature flags or without messing with your, with your external load balancer. You can do that just driven by code. And if you think about that, you can also have something specific for, I don't know, user profile. You can have that some specific demographics goes into your, into your specific version of your, of your software. And this is commonly named, as many of you already know, blue-green deployment. Uh, a specific um, version of the blue-green deployment called A-B testing is something very relevant as an example for online shopping in which you can do, you want to do uh, business testing against real data. So as an example, if I'm an online shopper and I want to put a specific button of a specific color and I want to test the conversion of this, I will sell more or less with that version. You can do it. And this is a very specific use case of blue-green which is called A-B testing. The last one, which is something that we had in real life, we had a, a bank asking for this, is a, a specific subcase of API versioning. We have banks that are these uh, point of sale devices on the field. They have it from different vendors, and maybe they have to do a release for, I don't know, security features or because they have a firmware update, but they want to do it on specific uh, uh, vendor point of sales, so they, they don't want to do it for everybody. And also in this case, inspecting as an example for um, the, 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 the agent of the, of the point of sale, so in the HTTP header they can inspect which the vendor is and serve a specific version with a specific patch just for this device. So they can manage to have in production multiple versions of the same application and uh, in an elegant way uh, drive specific audience to a specific version. Canary releasing Many of you already know that. So incremental release. This is not driven by a specific demographic or a specific kind of request, but just to test uh, how your, your um, new version is reacting against real life traffic. So this means that, as in the, in the mines, they have a canary. They can test if the new application will die because there is gas or not. This is uh, what is happening with, with canary releases. You have a, a rolling, an incremental release. You have 1% of your traffic, and you can test how your application behave, then 2%, and 3%, up to 100%. And it's very easy to roll back if something goes wrong. This is how you do that in, in Istio. So you add this weight parameter, and you can just uh, load balance. And having, in this example, you have 1% on version 2 and 99% on version 1, of course, but you can roll this. What is the real world scenario behind this? Of course, you can test application response against the real world stack. So you can have uh, the whole um, stack of application, meaning uh, 
real database, uh, real, I don't know, authentication system and stuff like that. And you do that with true traffic in a controlled environment, so just 1% of your, of your uh, customers. Or you can evaluate your impact on downstream stuff. So as an example, you can understand if in your release you are introducing some kind of recreation against uh, SQL queries on your database or you are doing uh, some computational stuff which is heavy and you don't want to, that, to do that. Less common, you can have the traffic mirroring. This is very interesting. You can, with a simple attribute, mirror all your traffic against a, another version of your application also in this case. And this is uh, somewhere mentioned as dark launches. So you can have that all of your traffic, all of your customer data goes into your real life uh, um, version, but also into another version. You have a shadow copy of your application. And even in this case, in an easy way, you can test your application against real life data. In this case, you, you, you will not have the impact on your customer base because the traffic is mirrored. So your customer goes into the real application, but the traffic is also copied onto a shadow copy. You can do this in a very easy way using the mirror attribute. So as you can see, you have version one and version two and the mirror attribute. And what's inside of this? Of course, stress testing against real data also in this case. But you can also use it in functional tests. So you can do a test against uh, uh, the same input and understand if your application behaves in the same way. So it's uh, kind of, uh, uh, let me say, end-to-end -end testing. And you can have the guarantee that your refactoring is going well, as an example. Fault injection. This is something very difficult to do without Istio. You can basically, in every point of your service mesh, we have seen before, you can inject a specific HTTP fault, or you can inject a specific delay. And so you can simulate uh, stuff going wrong into your infrastructure. This is something that is very hard to, to do in a real world scenario without Istio. Instead, with Istio, you can specific this fault directive, and you can see uh, you can specific the HTTP status you want, you can specific the percentage of, of uh, requests that has to fail, and uh, basically uh, you can also use a match, so you can uh, specific saying which kind of customer has to get this failure. And this may be useful to implement a Chaos Monkey-like environment, so you can inject a specific failure and you don't, don't have to uh, have a specific version of, of your you don't have to ask your developer to do this injecting, I don't know, feature flex or stuff like that, but uh, from behind of your, of your application, you can inject this. Last but not least, ACLs. This is something that security asks every time. When uh, you have a customer which is uh, trying to go from a monolithic application to microservices, or at least to split their monolithic application into different applications, they want to understand how they can put this kind of security directive into something that it was supposed to be just one process before. And in this case, you can, of course, input policies. Look at all that before, that you can manage to input security policies on every, basically, service, every network span inside the, the, the Istio service mesh. So this is something that you can do uh, with this kind of configuration, so you can use an handler, you have to declare a, a rule. This is something a bit more complex to implement. Of course, this is just a sample, but you have to fiddle about to implement it. But the whole idea is that you can give to your security department the visibility on what is going to happen inside your network. So they can, for each network span, specifically say who can communicate with who and what it has to be denied. And it's more granular than, than what you can do with Kubernetes by design, by default, without Istio. We also collected a couple more use cases. One more use case is rate limit. In this case, you may have a downstream system, an external service, which is expensive, and you want to limit the number of requests coming into that external service, and you can do this with this. It's not so common, but it's somewhat something interesting. It's not so common because uh, usually you want to do rate limit from, the, from uh, the, the calls coming from the external of your network, but in some cases you may want to do it inside of your network. And the real-world scenario, as I was saying, is to prevent uh, some expensive system in terms of, of money or in terms of computation to be, from being called 
too much from the overhaul. This is something not so easy, not so easy to, to implement with the rules. You have to declare a, a couple things more. It's a configuration which is a bit more complex than we've seen before, but nevertheless, it's something that it's interesting to implement with Istio because it's uh, um, completely configuration controlled, so you can have it on your own. And last but not least, you can implement circuit breaker, of course. Everybody here knows what circuit breaker is, but uh, simply you can uh, basically avoid an external system which is not uh, responding in a, w in a good way from being uh, furtherly called and from starting to impact all your applications. So you can just isolate the fault to a specific network plan and you don't have this fault to be propagated to your uh, complete application, basically. And the effect is that you can increase resiliency because your wall application will be protected. Uh, and on the other side, you can also support the link of the faulty service because if you have an external service or also a pod into your Kubernetes network, which uh, is starting to behave in a bad way, you don't want to keep uh, calling in because you can worsen the situation. So you can just isolate the failure and let, uh, give them the time to reboot or whatever it's needed. So this is about time for question. If you have, yes, please. Yeah. So are those things like when I, I declare how routing should be done on service, do I do that in the namespace of a particular project or do I do it at a global cluster level? You can do it also at a namespace level. Of course, there is an overhead, but the idea is that Envoy is lightweight enough to scale up to, I don't know, maybe hundreds of pods, but I don't think there is any kind of real world data so far on very big mesh. So I, I think that uh, could be painful, not only because of the overhead of each sidecar, but also because of the traffic that will span on your network, because every sidecar will have to uh, as, an, as an example, send packets back to, to the open tracing staff or we'll need to, from time to time, refresh the policy. So I think that for very huge network, you will probably no, not want to inject an, a sidecar on every point of the network. But of course, thank you for your question. Yes, please. I think there is some YAML to do that. There is, some, there is some, also some documentation. Of yeah, there is also some documentation. Yeah. You can, in theory, do it also on a mini shift, but it's very heavy in, on, on, on resources. Uh, uh, probably with Topishit 4, it will become a bit better. Yeah, thank you for the question. I do think, like you, that there are a lot of overlap that probably with time that will be solved a bit. Especially, I agree with you that there is a, an overlap between network policies and, and what is provided in Istio. Uh, even if I think that probably what you can do in Istio is a bit more fine-grained because you can, in theory, deny or accept any specific, quest any specific uh, uh, request coming uh, based on the content of the request. So uh, we, will, we, we were uh, looking at uh, HTTP header, but you can do something different also because Istio has the authentication uh, embedded so you can look into the, the, the credentials. So probably is a bit more granular. About the, um, the overlap with the middleware stuff, uh, there is an overlap with Fuse for sure, for something. As an example, Fuse has Fuse or B better camel provide its own circuit breaker, but it's implemented in a different way because it's embedded into the application instead 
with with the Istio, it's uh, it's in, in the um, in the sidecar. So uh, different architecture, probably the same use case. About three scale, uh, I know that there is a project of integrating three scale with Istio. Uh, the main idea here, uh, taking apart the names, is that in theory API gateway should be used only for traffic coming from outside into inside, and Istio should be used it for the intra-cluster traffic. This is low thumb, I think. And also, I think that right now, most of customers are looking into um, API management, mostly for authentication and reporting, not for all the other stuff you can do with Istio. As for real-world use case, I have at least two customers looking into Istio. Of course, I don't have any production experience because it's not GA so far. Uh, the two use cases are the one about point of sales, so customers which has, I don't know, maybe thousands of points of sales, and they need to uh, manage different version, of, and now they do it completely manually and it's painful. And the other one is more about visualization, because customer, uh, when they start to split up their application into different microservices, they lose the visibility into the uh, flow. So for troubleshooting or, I don't know, performance tuning is painful. And this is probably the most interesting thing for my customer. Advanced releases and monitoring, let's say, or at, or at least having a bird's eye view of what's going on into their Kubernetes mesh. Any other question? In theory, can be linked into the um, user itself because you can authenticate the user against Istio. So yeah, it maintains sort of a session. You can do like that. In theory, Istio can manage the, the encryption for you, so yes. You can chain encryption and policies of, uh, I don't know, advanced routing. Yeah, M mutual TLS is one of the, the, the security features that Istio provides. Uh, and you can choose to encrypt uh, or not uh, the traffic between all the microservices, all, all your services. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I had asked the question, the first one was already answered. Actually, uh, have you evaluated any other uh, service mesh solution than uh, Istio? Oh, personally, not. Okay. Uh, what about speed? Like, how are you going to use this uh, speed and speeding? But basically, it's like additional layer to every like more and so on. As I was saying, personally, I don't have any production experience. I would expect to be less than 10 percent. There is a big penalty. effort in in uh, improving uh, over and over the the performance of all the components which are involved, uh, especially the ones that are in the middle, like the the proxies, of course. And the, the impact is quite uh, uh, tiny, but the 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 goal is to improve further the the, the performance of the. As you can imagine, some of the stuff can be cached. As an example, the policies and all the tele telemetry stuff can be cached. Some of the stuff can be done in a sync way, like the, all the monitoring stuff, all the tracing stuff. But nevertheless, you will have an op more in your, in your network connection. So I would expect anyway some kind of penalty. I, I expect this to be as small as possible. Yeah, this may, may be more or less relevant uh, depending on the kind, kind of application that you are dealing with. So in normal applications that are, that are not very uh, bound to network performance, uh, this can be not relevant. Of course, uh, in other cases, this can have a big impact. Than 
That's a good question. Actually, uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago, we had a customer which was, was asking about having an intrusion prevention system into the service mesh. I'd never seen anything like that. Uh, about debugging, I think that in some controlled uh, environments, you can do something because um, at the end of the day, Invo is a, is a C++ component, so I expect him to have some kind of debugger that can be attached, or at least some, some logging, of course. But this is for sure something very interesting to explore. Okay. I think no more questions, so thank you for your time. We will thank have you.